Ladies and gentlemen, Denny Altair. And now, here's your host on Pile and Company, Jacob Pyle. Pretty woman walking down the street, pretty woman. Kinda like to me, pretty woman. I don't believe you, you're not the truth. No one can look as good as you. Mercy. Pretty woman, won't you pardon me, pretty woman? Couldn't help but see, pretty woman, that you look lovely as can be. Are you lonesome just like me? Pretty woman, stop a while. Pretty woman, talk a while. Pretty woman, give your smile to me. Pretty woman, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty woman, look my way. Pretty woman, say you'll stay with me. Cause I need you. I'll treat you right. Come with me, baby. Be mine tonight. Oh, pretty woman, don't walk on by, pretty woman. Don't make me cry, pretty woman. Don't walk away, okay. If that's the way it must be, okay I guess I'll go on home, it's late There'll be tomorrow night, but wait What do I see? Is she walking back to me? Yeah, she's walking back to me Yeah, she's walking back to me, oh. Pretty woman. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Well, thank you all so much. Hello everybody, welcome to Pile and Company. I'm Jacob Pyle, and man, did you know that Halloween is going to be here in two weeks from today? Just two. Interesting, isn't it? This week's show is going to be a very special show for all of us. Because Effective, beginning this week, an old friend of this program is back as my co-host. I'm only talking about the one and only, Denny Altair. <laughs> Along with Mr. No Name as himself, we have a... And, and we have a lot of more fun stuff for you, too. So we'll be back to introduce to all of you our newcomer to our Pile and Company family right after these words. Welcome back to Pile and Company. I am so excited this week because um, I have the thrill and the opportunity to introduce our new permanent co-host on our show. You know, when, back a few months ago, you know, he, then he was, you know, I was looking for a co-host to do a show. 
And, you know, Dane was just so kind enough to have spoken up to me about wanting to... This guy, this guy was so kind enough to have been able to speak up to me about wanting to do this. He's such a great guy to work with, and I am just so blessed that I have that I am just so blessed that I have somebody who has been he has been in um TV news before a long time ago he has been he still writes those occasional articles for the Tipton Tribune and he volunteer and he helps out and volunteers whenever he can ladies and gentlemen please give it up for my um our new permanent co-host on Pylon Company Denny Altair. Thank you, Jacob. It's good to be back. This week, I'd like to share with you a very important borrowed time article. In fact, it involves these three words, I love you. Or rather, how much we often say that to our friends and family. How often have you told th those that you hold close to your heart just how much they really mean to you? or say, I love you to them. Looking back over my lifetime, there have been a lot of times where I wish that I would have told the person, this person or that person, just how much I really cared for or loved them. And by the time I think about doing it, it is too late. You should never let a day go by without telling someone in your life just how much you love and appreciate them because one day it may be too late. I could recall having a friend that lived not far from me when I lived on a farm over by Elwood. His name was Brad Rogers, and we hung around one another as much as we could at the time, but his life was cut short way too soon in 1978, and I never really got it to tell him just how much I appreciated his friendship. Okay. He never once judged me based on my physical problems. He overlooked them. There also have been family members who I wished that I had expressed my feelings toward and how much they meant to me during my lifetime. Before my grandmother on my mother's side passed away, I made a promise to her that I would be there for my grandfather and spend as much time with him as I possibly could. I either called him on the telephone or what I would drive down to Atlanta where he lived and visit with him. I would help him out in the yard if he happened to be doing yard work or around the house. Whatever he needed help with, I would try to accommodate him. And I did that until he went to his heavenly home in September of 1989. And when my father was alive, I know there were times that he got upset with me over one thing or another. But my love and respect for him never wavered. I told him as often as I could just how much I loved and appreciated him. Even just before he passed away, I told him that I loved him and I made him... It made me feel good. Whatever he needed help with, I would try to accommodate him. And I did that until he, until he went to his heavenly home in September 1989. And when my father was alive, I know there were times that he got upset with me over one thing or another. But not, my love and respect for him never wavered. I told him as often as I, as I could just how much I loved and respected him. Even just before he passed away, I told him that I loved him and it made me feel good knowing that I did that. And I know he appreciated hearing that. With the tragic and unexpected passing of two friends that I held dear, it makes me think of the many times that I wished I could have told someone in my family or even a friend that is no longer around just how much I really cared for and loved them. Sometimes I wonder if they ever really knew without me ha saying anything at all. I'm sure they did. So if you haven't told someone in your life just how much they really mean to you or that you love them, do it now. You'll be glad you did. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more of Pile and Company after this. 
Welcome back to Power and Company. Excuse me for just a minute. My phone's ringing. Hello? Danny, is that you? Hey, Mr. No Name. How are you doing? It's good to hear from you. Yeah, Jacob told me that you're going to be returning as our co-host on this show. Sorry I couldn't be with you in person to congratulate you. I had some official business to take care of. So anyway, are you excited? Well, yes, I am. I am so excited to be here. This is a fun show to do. What have you been up to these days? Do you still ha hear voices inside your head? Not much anymore. I went to the witch doctor to see why I keep getting these voices inside my head. Witch doctor? Why do they call him a witch doctor? Simply because it was hard to choose which doctor to choose from. <laughs> I see. Anyway, I went to see the witch doctor, and he told me why I kept getting those voices inside my head. Why is that? I had what's known as the voice inside my head itis. The voice inside my head itis? Why do they call it that? It's this rare disease when you end up getting voices inside your head for a long period of time that you can't concentrate on what you're trying to do. The witch doctor told me to say a few magic words and the voice inside my head eventually did go away. Amazing. So what else have you been do up to? Nothing much. Just sitting back and telling jokes. I see. Well, listen, Mr. No Name. I have to move on with the show. But I would like to thank you, and I hope to see you again soon. Same here. Bye, Denny. Bye, Mr. No Name. I have the thrill and the opportunity to interview somebody who is a Tipton Tribune columnist and has worked on a local newscast long before the show was even born. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow co-host of Altair and Pyle, Denny Altair. Hey, Denny. Okay. Before we get started here, Denny, tell the viewers out there a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I live here in Tipton. Um, I'm a high, Tipton High School graduate. Um, I work for the uh, well, uh, Tipton Tribune. I supply uh, columns for them, um, and I've done some work in television uh, several years ago, back when Tippin had their own cable channel. <laughs> That's interesting. Now, before we get into this interview, I'm sure there are viewers out there that are too young to remember that local newscast you, got, you, you and Brett Knut put together. Keep us refreshed and tell us about what that was like. Well, um, Jacob, it was very interesting to say the least. Uh, Rick Kernett approached me asking me if I would like to uh, be a part of the television station, mm -hmm. and which you know I agreed to do. And I basically reported on the local stories here in town uh, that, I, that we thought people might find of interest. Well, that's interesting. Was there any particular particular moment about the newscast you guys put together that still stands out in your memory even to this day? Um, as far as uh, like funny moments or something like that, uh, you know, it's it's been so long ago that, you know, <laughs> I can't really think of anything that sticks out in my mind. <laughs> now I've got to ask you, how does it feel to be back working on newscasts like this again? You know, it feels great. I really miss this uh, kind of thing. Um, it's something that I've always wanted to do, and um, and now that the opportunity has um, uh, arisen, uh, you know, I'd be glad to accept it, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I think I'm really going to enjoy it. Good. Now, I know when I interviewed you before, you said something about going into further detail about news reporting. So go ahead real quick and tell us about how you are enthused about news reporting and stuff like that. Well, Jacob, it goes back to um, when I was 
younger. <laughs> I won't say how young. <laughs> that's going to age myself. <laughs> but um, it's been several years ago. Uh, I was out at our local 4-H programs, and uh, one of the Tipton Tribune uh, editors at the time had an office out there, mm -hmm. and I just one you know with nothing else to do at the time, I just wandered in there and just kind of wrote something up, you know, just pure, uh, just out of my head, you know, and uh, she went ahead and put it in the paper, mm -hmm. and I think that's how the reporting bug bit me. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did you get your start in working for the Tipton Tribune? Well, that was um, my idea. Um, I had uh, sent a email to our local editor asking if I could have the opportunity to uh, do some stories because, I, like I said previously, you know, that I had this passion for. And she said, well, you know, submit something and we'll take it from there. And, and uh, I've been doing it now since... Uh, I believe it's been October, November of last year, maybe mm -hmm. even before that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And finally, what advice would you give a young person, me especially, about putting together newscasts and doing stuff like that? Well, take a, uh, the advice I would give is to um, give it your all, um, do the best that you can, and uh, you know, as long as you. As long as you put forth your best effort and and do the best you can, I'm sure you know it'll it'll go off the ground with no problems. All right, Denny out here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. That was great. By the way, I still do write occasional articles for the Tipton Tribune, as well as participating in events such as the Park Festival, among other things, every year. Don't click that mouse just yet, because there's still more of Pile and Company yet to come. And we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jacob Pyle. You've seen our show before, and so far we've had a lot of interesting people appear as a guest co-host for our show. What can you do as a guest co-host, you may ask? If you have a very talented singing voice, we'll be happy to have you. If you have a really special talent, we'll be happy to have you. Even if it's something silly or funny, we will still be able to have you on our program. If you are interested in being a guest co-host on our show, drop us a line on our Pile & Company Facebook page. Or go to our website at www.pileandcompany.weebly.com. Or you can email me, Jacob Pyle, at jtpyle1 at aol.com. Or you can send me a Facebook message as well. And we will all look forward to having you as a guest co-host right here on Pile & Company. Welcome back to Pile and Company. Once again, give it up for my co-host on Pile and Company, Jacob Pyle, as he sings the Ray Charles classic, Georgia on My Mind. Georgia Georgia The whole day through Just an old sweet song Keeps Georgia on my mind Yeah I said Georgia A song of you comes as sweet and clear as moonlight. Other arms reach out. Other eyes smile so tenderly, still and peaceful.
dreams I see the road leads back to you I said Georgia oh sweet Georgia no peace I find just an old sweet song George, oh my, my. Hit it! Yes! arms reach out to me, other eyes smile so tenderly, still these dreams I see the road leads back to you, yeah, I said Georgia, was sweet Georgia no peace I find just an old sweet song it's Georgia on my mind wow just an old sweet song it's Georgia, Georgia on my mind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pile and Company for return after this. If you want to watch more episodes of this show, go to www.pileandcompany.weebly.com and please don't forget to like our Facebook page as well. Back to you guys. Well, Danny, I'm afraid that we have run out of time for this week, but I would like to say welcome to Pile and Company. I'm so looking forward to being able to work with you again. And as, and as for you out there, we thank you for watching. Join us again next week when we'll be featuring some more skits, songs, and a whole lot more. Hope you guys can join us then. What a difference you made in my life. What a difference you made in my life. You're my sunshine day and night. Oh, what a difference you made in my life. I'm Denny Altair. And I'm Jacob Pyle. Until next week, good night, and God bless my friends. This is Steve Brown speaking for Pyle and Company. This program has been pre-recorded. <laughs>